Greetings, this is Jim Lindsay. This is a CIS 320 video, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to make a timeline. Uh, this is the first type of drawing that I learned how to create using Visio, and so it's sort of near and dear to my heart. Uh, I learned this one back before I was ever, ever even had an idea of being a teacher um, when I was doing IT consulting for law firms, and one of our clients came to us and said, Hey, we would like to create a really pretty timeline of some events that we could then blow out you know make very large on a poster board or, or even bigger and present to a jury and so that's when I learned about Visio and how to uh, use the program it's it's very straightforward um, I'm going to show you how to create this this drawing so let's open up Visio and when you go to the file and new area if we look at the categories you'll see that there are there is a, a category called schedule so this is a schedule type of drawing and specifically we want to create a timeline and so you have calendars we'll also learn about calendars later but right now we're going to spend our time on on timelines so I'm going to click on timeline and I'll choose US units and it creates my my blank canvas for me and it gives you my stencil so over here in the shapes pane I have quick shapes and I also have timeline shapes. I'm just going to use the timeline shapes. That's all it's going to, uh, that's all I have to do. Uh, this is really, there aren't many choices because what you're, you're doing is you're creating the timeline and then you're putting milestones on that timeline. And what a timeline picture uh, presents to somebody is a sequence of events. You know, what happened between this point and that point. That's what a timeline is. And you can make a timeline that, that spans years down to seconds. You have that that much latitude. Um, you can, there is a, a limit, it go, only goes back to like, uh, I always forget this, like in the 1800s. Like if you wanted to do something from like, um, from the 1400s, you would be out of luck. But you know, as long as it's from the 1800s to the present, you can get timelines that match up those, uh, with those dates. Um, and again, you can specify whether the the unit of measure inside that timeline is a day, an hour, a year, a month, uh, or, or or down to the second. Um, so let, let me show you how to do this. Well, the first shape you need is the block uh, is the timeline itself, and you can have uh, different styles of timelines. You know, like a block, a cylinder, um, or a line. I'm going to go with the cylinder. I'm going to drop it out here, and as soon as you do that, it's going to say, "Hey." what is the starting and ending of this timeline so you have to specify the specific um, beginning and ending I'm gonna go with January of 2016 so I'm gonna click on my little arrow here I get to go back to uh, January I'm gonna say from January 3rd through come back to January again and you just use these little arrows to identify. You can also click in here and actually type a date if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to go to like January 3rd through the 9th. So I have one week's worth of time from the 3rd through the 9th of January of, of, of uh, January in 2016. You can specify times here. So let's say you wanted to go from. In this case, it's going to go from you know 12 a.m. to 12 a.m. on that, those particular dates. What is the unit of measure here? Well, because I have only have a week here, I'm going to go with days. And I'll hit uh, time format. You can go in here and specify what the, the format is, etc. I'm going to go with the defaults on that. I'm going to hit OK. And there is my timeline. If I zoom in here and look at this closely now, you'll see that there is the Sunday, the Monday, the Tuesday, and so on. And so that is the, the timeline on which I would place my milestones or the events which I wish to tell my viewers about and anytime you make a timeline well not any time but a lot of the time when you make timelines there's one particular period of the uh, of the of the uh, sequence of events that's kind of congested or busy um, Visio has what's called an expanded timeline feature which is really nice to take a, a certain portion and, and bring it out to its own space. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say 
on the 4th and the 5th, as let's say this Monday and Tuesday were like super busy days for what we're going to timeline. So as you look at these available shapes here, you'll see this expanded timeline. What you do is you drop the expanded timeline out here and the expanded timeline has to be inside of the the main timeline start and, and ending point. This is a, a really frequent um, mistake that, that students make. They, they'll try and make the, the start or the end of the expanded timeline outside of the, the main timeline and it, of course that kind of freaks uh, Visio out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, and you can, you can even if you wanted this to start on the third, you basically would have to like make sure that the time was like you know maybe 12:01 a.m. as opposed to 12 a.m. Um, so I'm going to go uh, with the fourth as my starting point, and the fifth as my ending point for the expanded timeline within the main timeline. I'm going to hit OK, and it puts it there for me. And you can see that as I zoom out here on the page, those hours of this timeline are now shown uh, you know in detail down here so how does this work what do you do how do you get things under the to the uh, to the drawing well you start working with these different milestones and they're different styles there are line milestones and diamonds and pins and so on and you basically get to pick ones that you think look nice um, I'm gonna go with the line milestone and I'm just gonna drop it on the, the drawing and where you drop it Visio is smart enough to say, hey, you know, um, this looks like it's approximately at the third. I'll, I'll hit cancel on that one. And let me just go ahead and delete that, that one milestone. Let me take another line milestone, drop it over here, over between the seventh and the eighth. And it knows that it's somewhere between the seventh and the eighth. And you get to specify the time. Let's say we, we want that to be at 12 p.m. So it's like right in the middle. And you get to put a description here. Say, so I went. To lunch. Hit OK. And so as you zoom in there, <clears throat> that um, event is now on the timeline. And so that's how you put things into this drawing. You select your, your milestones and you drop those accordingly. accordingly. Um, what I really uh, try to emphasize to students is when you're using an expanded timeline, um, watch this when I put a an event on the main timeline okay I'm going to drop it back here go ahead and change the time to like 12 p.m. there this is on the fourth when I put it on the main timeline it also showed up on the expanded timeline but the reason I have this expanded timeline out here in the first place is because there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff that happens in this period of time right and so if I include it on both my drawing is going to get really messy and so what I would encourage you to do is if you have an expanded timeline let me go ahead and just delete that one and it reduces it deletes it from both um, if you have an expanded timeline the milestones for that period of time should go out here <clears throat> out here on the expanded timeline and not uh, not back there on the main timeline because this is going to be a um, this is going to be a, a it's going to be congested enough as it is because that's the reason you put the expanded timeline out. So that's how you use this sort of drawing. Now, what can you, uh, what are some neat things you can do to um, let me make this? Just add this in here. Bear with me one second. There we go. So we got some some multiple events here. Um, you can then manipulate these these milestones so that they they look pretty and again what you're going to do you're going to end up with a, with a with a timeline that has I don't know a dozen different events on it right and you can take these these are just text objects here you can take this and you can move this okay so as you move these events you're just moving uh, the, the text box so instead of having everything kind of congested and, and jumbled up together like that you can Use your, you know, use your acumen that you've you've developed from working with this program so far, to make this thing actually look pretty. And so think about this: like for example, instead of having all this stuff in here in this area, maybe you take a couple of these events and flip them over. So I'm going to select this event, and I'll right-click it, 
So I'm gonna have that event selected. I'm gonna go to position and I can rotate. I'm gonna so from rotate shape, I'm going to flip that vertically so it shows up underneath. And from there, I can start to I'll do the same thing with this one. And you have it selected, go to position, come down here to rotate the shape. In this case, I'm gonna flip it uh, vertically and make these timelines to, you know, so that they look nice. And zoom out there, see the whole diagram, start to be uh, something that's very legible and very readable for the user. And to, to modify the contents of the events, you can just double click in there and, and type. Now, if you wanna get line breaks in there, press the enter key, and that'll make those line breaks. And so um, that's, that's how you do that. Um, and all that stuff that you've learned about making a, a, a diagram look pretty, that all applies here too. You can go to your backgrounds, put a nice background on here. You can put themes on this thing, you have variations. And so what you end up with is a pretty document that displays. Now this one's kind of hard to read because it's green on green, right? Um, I would modify that to where it was uh, looked a little bit easier to read. Uh, there's there's a better example right there where the background is blue but the text is dark. And you're looking for that contrast so that you can actually see things, and and that's what a timeline is. Um, your borders and titles those come from the same places that you've been you've been learning about uh, in, in the preceding lessons, and so that's that's a pretty good looking document, and that shows somebody from this date to that date that these four events happened, and that's what a timeline is. So I hope you're going to enjoy making these uh, and I will have you uh, create some of this for your homework assignments.